Is a 90s mountain bike really just the same as a modern gravel bike? Well, today, that's what we're going to attempt to find out. Okay, what's the deal? What am I riding here? This is a 1997 Cannondale F2000. A top tier aluminum mountain bike with a fatty 70 head shock suspension of 70 millimeters. It was handmade in Pennsylvania and the catalog states that it was designed on computers. We're rolling on 26 inch wheels with 1.8 Michelin Celeste tires. That have easily got to be from the early thousands. It's through axle with XT cantilever brakes, SRAM power shift, what's it called? Grip shift. And it's a three by. Let's see how many's in the back. It's eight speed with an 11 to 30 in the back. I'm used to a 50. <laughs> and a couple interesting bits. It has Coda hubs, stem, and bars, which was Cannondale's components brand that they ran for a couple of years. Cannondale Advanced Aluminum Design. All right, climbing, 12% grade. It just kind of noodles along. The head shock, it's constantly moving. It does not lock out completely. So that's where a little bit of my energy is going. These tiny 26 wheels, they're taking a cut. And granted, I was a little tired before this ride, so, so there's that. I don't know if I'll. I don't know if I'll keep that in though. Might not want to. It's not hard, it's just slow. I'm a little nervous about a couple things, specifically the tires. They're old, they're tubed. I brought a pump, but I forgot a patch kit, and I don't have any 26 inch tubes. So there's that. Please don't die, please don't die, please don't die. There's a little bit of old bike squeak on this, which I thought about oiling the chain, but it was so clean, I didn't want to put anything on it. So I just, I let it run. You get squeaks as a byproduct. Who knew? Player. Unequivocally, a modern bike is 10 times faster and more efficient than something like this. Cool. The price of cool is a thousand watts. And by far the most interesting aspect of this bike is its owner. His name is Michael Fry. He used to race this bike in high school and he just recently completed his 13th round of chemotherapy. And because of that, he hasn't been able to ride, which is why he hit me up to see if I would put this bike through the paces on the channel. So he'd be able to ride the ride without riding the ride. Remember, we adventure so you don't have to. When Mike told me a funny story about the name of this bike, he was riding up some gnarly single track with his friend who had just completed the climb, and he said, Way to go, Nitro! And she thought he was talking to his bike. So from that point forward, it was known as Nitro. Nitro. It takes 18.5 miles for us to hit gravel from Portland. City problems. Ooh. Woo! I thought this was fascinating. Nitro weighs in at just over 23 pounds which is almost exactly the same weight as the aluminum Cannondale gravel bike. So I guess in that way, they're, they're pretty much the same. This is the section I'm nervous about with these old tires. I'm just hoping we can make it through this. Oh man, we're floating. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Well, these cantilever brakes work much better than I expected. Pleasant, pleasant surprise. You guys.
I forgot my helmet was on. Is it off now? Let me know in the comments below. One thing that's pretty interesting, the geometry is very tall. It really reminds me of a cross bike or what I imagine Ron Lewis feels like on any bike. With those tiny 26 inch wheels mashed together, puts you all upright and squirrely. Yeah. And look how much stem comes on this thing. And the catalog for this bike shows it with the stem flipped down in pursuit mode. No, thank you. I mean, it looks good, but yeah. The short top tube and the long stem on this bike makes it feel a little top heavy. Turning in those gravel descents is a lot twitchier and does not feel very stable. Opposed to a modern gravel bike with a longer top tube, shorter stem, puts you more in the bike. That feeling is much more stable and based out for gravel descents of any kind. Stability is your friend. Okay, I'm gonna do a little experiment here. I got a shot of espresso in ice and a can of root beer. I think this is gonna work. Let's find out. I'm probably low. It's not as good as you would think it would be. This thing might not be optimized for road climbing. I'm just saying. I'm scared of these tires. I'm kind of spent. It's tailwind. I'm trying to optimize my recovery. And what's my takeaway? Is a 90s mountain bike the same as a modern gravel bike? I would say no, not at all. They're completely different. Geometry, materials, wheel size. There's a lot of things that go into making this experience much more efficient than this experience. But I mean, come on, it was the 90s. Everyone was just trying to figure it out. This does bring up the concept of a forever bike. What if this was your forever bike? Sure, you could still ride all the things and you would be accustomed to it, but there's been a lot of innovations in the last 15 years. And shout out Michael Frey for the opportunity. I was honored to ride your blast from the past. I've been curious for so long. And Godspeed on your recovery, dear friend. We're all pulling for you. And the ride by the numbers? Four hours, five minutes, rolling time, 50.8 miles and 4,990 feet of elevation. We're like 10 feet off of 5K. Hmm. If you're looking for the best value modern gravel bike under 2K, check out this video where I break down the Canyon Grail. Might be a heavy contender for anyone that's looking to get into gravel, but it's not gonna have anywhere near the aesthetics that a 90s mountain bike has. So. It's give and take. You can't have it all. You gotta choose.